Hello everybody, what is going on? It's your boy Colonies, and I'm back today with a new YouTube video. And uh, this is one that I know a lot of you guys out there have been anticipating for a while, and uh, a lot of you guys have wanted me to kind of sit down in front of the camera and do a more focused video about improving again, uh, like I did with the five keys for Young Link. So here we are, I posted on Twitter uh, saying basically ask me anything about improving in Smash, and uh, I picked out 20 really, really good questions from you guys, and there were so many questions, like 100 replies to that tweet, uh, and I just had no possible way of getting to all of them But uh, here's 20 of the best ones that I could find and I'm thinking about potentially making this a monthly thing So let me know down in the comments. Is that something that you're interested in? Uh, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it All right, our first question today is gonna to be coming from Ice Killer. Uh, Ice Killer I played against before in tournament, really good Kirby player. And they ask, any good way of not letting tilt get to you after a loss or even when losing a stock? I have a serious problem of getting tilted easily in a set. So when I think about tilting and uh, you know, I get a lot of questions about tilting and things like that. Uh, I've dealt with huge tilt problems and huge, uh, you know, just aggravation at the game in general problems throughout my Smash career. Dude, that's such bulls! And one of the number one ways that I've learned to uh, to deal with it is acceptance. It's a, it's a skill that's not learned easily and it's not learned quickly and it's not something that you can just start doing tomorrow and you'll just be 100% not tilting anymore. But really, the reality comes down to this. We're playing this game. The game is made the way it is. Certain characters have moves and, and things that's bullshit. There's gonna be things that happen to you in the game that are bullshit. Uh, there's gonna be losses you have in tournament or friendlies or whatever that you probably shouldn't have lost. But guess what? It's also true that there have been many moments where you've hit people with bullshit or you've probably won a set that maybe you shouldn't. And you just gotta realize that it's a give and take game, man. There's gonna be times where the game gives you a break. There's gonna be a time where the game takes away a break from you. And uh, that's just kind of the way it goes. I really do think that just accepting the game as it is and uh, understanding that you can't really control that and all you really should focus on is just doing the most that you can do to win and improve. And uh, that, that personally helped me a lot with tilting when I started to accept the game for what it is. And uh, when it comes to tilting as well, the last piece of advice I'll give on this topic is really try to just go one day of grinding or, or being in a tournament or whatever it is and just try not to complain at all for one day. Uh, I know it sounds like silly and it sounds really easy, but if you're in a mindset where you're always complaining about stuff, it's not easy to stop complaining. Uh, but if you can just make it through one full day of doing that, it's a really nice way to kind of jumpstart your improvement when it comes to tilting. All right, our next question comes in from my boy Estrella, another longtime friend of mine. Shout out to the Neo boys. And uh, he says, what do you feel is most important to pay attention to when observing either your own gameplay or other people's gameplay when watching games slash sets? Would a question like this depend on the area in which you're looking to improve? Or is it best to take in as much as possible? So I think uh, Australia is kind of pretty much already on to what I'm going to say. But when it comes to VOD review and analyzing, and there's another question where I'll dive into this a little deeper in the future. I really do believe that the number one way to get the most out of reviewing VODs is to go into the VOD reviewing session with a specific purpose. That purpose can be many different things. It could be a matchup that you struggle in and you're watching a top player of your character do it better. If that's the case and you wanna go in and, and just try to analyze every little micro interaction in the matchup that goes their way, that doesn't go your way. It could be looking to, you know, maybe try to steal things from their combo game. If that's the case and you wanna go in focused on that, could be recovering, disadvantage, etc. It doesn't really matter what you're looking for. Instead, it really just matters about going in with a focused mindset and being able to pull out as much as you possibly can from that. One of the really cool things about reviewing VODs is that you can watch your own video five times in a row, and if you have a different objective every time you watch it, you'll probably be able to pull out a lot more than you expected you would be able to if you just went in trying to get everything all at once. All right, next question comes in from Marsh, another Ohio player, and he says, what's the best way to improve and get serious practice for Smash right now while everything is online slash Wi-Fi? Besides high level grind servers that aren't open to everyone for whatever reason. <laughs> okay, let's be honest guys. Let's be honest for a second. How much do you really think that you improve from your friendly sessions that you play with your friends? Be honest with me now. How much do you think you improve? Because I played hours and hours and hours of Smash against friends in the vein of, of practicing until I finally had to accept and realize years later that all that time was probably wasted. And the real reason why is because there's a difference between playing Smash for fun and playing Smash to get better. 
Uh, you know, it doesn't mean that getting better can't be fun, but it's okay to play Smash casually and, and enjoy it like that. But it's really important to go into a practice session deciding, am I playing casually? Am I playing to practice, right? I think that's super important. So with that being said, even in a situation like coronavirus where, you know, we can't go to offline tournaments, it's not a lot harder to find offline practice. Uh, all, all those cases being true, all those things being true, uh, I really think that it should not affect 95% of people's ability to be able to get a lot better at the game. And I'm going to tell you how right now. So on the screen, as you can see right now, this is my training routine document that I created probably about a year ago. And the main purpose of this document is to outline how to improve at Smash without playing online or against another person. I think individual solo practice is really hard for Smash because the training mode sucks. You don't really know what to do and you don't see very many visual results in like a short period of time that show you that you got a lot better. However, the number one most important thing, in my opinion, about being able to get better at the game is to have full, fluid, fundamental control of your character. Now, nobody truly has full, fluid control of their character. It's just, you know, not possible. However, as you will see when you watch top players play, they pretty much never mess up the little things. They never mess up the turnarounds usually. They never mess up the movement. They always go exactly where they want to go. They know how to hit people's shields at the right spacing. They know how to do raw back airs on command. All of these things are character control. And when this was created, I was actually in a really big slump and I had gone all the way down to number eight in Ohio from number two. And I had decided enough was enough and that I wanted to get back on my grind. And using this training routine, as well as playing with other people, it really did help me become, you know, a player who was able to be back at number two in Ohio and, and continue to grow from there. All right, next question comes in here from Cherry CT one And Cherry says, how do you try not to get in the mindset of forcing a kill? I've had a lot of situations where the opponent is at high percents and I just want to get the stock over with, but it ends up backfiring on me. I really, really love this question because this is something that a lot of lower level players definitely struggle with. And it's probably the reason why they have so much trouble closing out games against higher level players. When it comes to forcing a kill, the number one mentality that helps me a lot is to remember that we're playing Smash Ultimate. And Smash Ultimate is a game where you could be down by 100% and your opponent has two stocks, and then you finally do take that stock, and you could do 60 to 100% on them in one combo, or you could, you know, just whatever. You could dominate the game for the next 30 seconds and still completely have a great chance to win that game. Uh, the number one thing to take away from this is that even when you're down a stock and you're having trouble killing somebody, just be confident in your advantage state and be confident in your ability to bring a game back. And uh, if you know your character and you know your character can do it, then it's a lot easier to believe that way. All right, our next question comes from Velvet728 and Velvet says, how do you handle tense situation where there's a lot on the line? So this is a really great question and uh, it, it's gonna differ a lot for a lot of different people, different types of personalities, you know. Uh, some people like to just not care. Some people like to, you know, say that it makes them a better player if they're in a tense situation like this. For me, the number one way that I've found to help myself deal with really intense situations is just to continue playing my game and understand that my opponent is probably just as nervous as I am. It's very uncommon to find people that don't get nervous in last stock situations. So if you understand that your opponent is probably just as nervous as you and you just refocus back in on the game, then I mean, you're really doing all that you can and, and you probably are even doing more than they are. So just try to remember that everybody's going to be nervous no matter what, and that at the end of the day, all you can do is really play your game. All right, our next question comes from my boy, Willow Wisp. Shout out to Willow Wisp, a uh, consistent viewer of my stream. And he says, how do you go about managing expectations when competing for all levels of competition? And what are good slash realistic goals to set for yourself? I really, really, really love this question, and I think it's so important and it does not get talked about nearly enough. Managing expectations is one of the number one ways to keep yourself from losing full composure and tilting at things that you should not be tilting at. I would say probably about three or four months ago, and a lot of my viewers can attest to this as well, I was going through a really big slump uh, in online tournaments and I just felt like I wasn't getting that much better. And it was because I had just recently finished top eight at Gommel, which was probably my one of my best tournament performances yet. And all of a sudden I had new expectations on myself of needing to top eight every tourney or wanting to just go even farther every single time I got on the game. And really it, it just kind of caused this big slump that did not stop until I just remembered that 
you can't go in with big expectations because the number one thing that leads to tilt, and this, there's a lot of science behind this and it's, it's very important to understand, is tilt is the emotion that comes from expectations not being met. In League of Legends, for example, if you have an expectation that your team member is going to do a certain thing that they should be doing, and then they don't do that certain thing, that's probably going to tilt you. And it's just the same way in Smash. If you have an expectation that you're going to beat a certain player, or that you're going to go end up in a certain placement at a tournament, and then you don't do it, it's probably going to tilt you way more than it has any right to do. So I really say, go into a tournament. So I really say, go into a tournament, any level of play, and your mentality should be to just focus on improving. It's so much easier said than done, I know, but it's literally impossible unless you try. And I promise you guys, if you try out having that kind of mentality of not putting expectations on yourself and just trying to get better in every match that you play in a tournament, you'll probably find yourself being way less nervous. All right, we're probably gonna have time for about two more questions. Like I said, I would like to make this a more regular thing if it is something that y'all are interested in, so just let me know in the comments. But Greywing SSBU is gonna ask here, so I'm pretty sure that this isn't just me, but I'm pretty good. But when I play in a competitive aspect or something's on the line, I lose all the time. I'll lose to someone in tournament I know I'd beat in matches. How do I overcome this? Also, would prefer an answer without grind servers. A lot of disdain for the grind servers, I'm, I'm noticing. Uh, when it comes to, you know, tournament pressure, kind of cracking somebody, you know, this is very, very, very common at lower levels of play. I'm sure almost every single player goes through this, uh, including myself at some point. And that is, you know, you're getting good at Smash. You're getting good enough to beat your friends. You're getting good enough to beat people who are pretty good. But when it comes down to it in tournament, you choke and you're not able to play correctly and you're not able to play well. This is just the time proven, time tested, number one way of getting better at dealing with tournament pressure and playing how you're capable of playing in bracket. It's just experience. It's just putting your nose down, grinding, entering more tournaments, putting yourself in more pressure situations. The more and more you expose yourself to the pressure, the more and more you put yourself out there, the easier it becomes to handle. And once you do start having a handle over it, that's when you really can start taking those strides to the next level and, and you know really try to start improving on, on more things that matter besides just being able to play decent in tournament. Uh, hopefully that helps. All right, our final question for today is gonna be coming from Mortagun. And Mortagun says, what is the general in-game thought process someone should have when they're playing a set? And uh, I really like ending on this because I think it's something that is that can carry with you guys, that can stick with you guys. Uh, th this is a piece of advice that I do think is very important. And that is the idea that when you're playing in a set, you should not be thinking while you're trying to play during the game. You want to have your hands, have your brain, have your muscle memory in a place where you can kind of let yourself off the leash and just trust your instincts, trust your muscle memory and your experience uh, while you're playing. However, one of the most important things as well is it is taking note of what your opponent is doing while you're playing without spending too much time and energy thinking about how to overcome that in the moment. You wanna have an observational mind while you're playing. You wanna make sure that you're picking out as much as you possibly can from your opponent's play style, but you don't wanna fixate on it so hard that you're not able to actually keep up during the game. Smash is just too fast paced of a game and, and just too quick. Smash is just too fast paced of a game and, and the action just goes too quick for you to be standing there like trying to think and figure out how to do different things. You need to be ready and prepared. And, uh, and in between games, that information that you gathered, if you haven't already used it yet, you know, you should just try to be racking up as much as possible so that you can trust your muscle memory when the time comes. All right, everybody, that is gonna do it for this video. I hope you did enjoy it and I hope you did find it useful. Uh, please tell me down in the comments, you know, if you want me to do more. Please tell me down in the comments, you know, if you want me to do more of these, if you want me to create like a monthly series based off of this. Uh, for the next version of this video, if it does happen, I'll probably just post like a similar tweet how I did last time, so be sure to follow me on Twitter. Uh, if you like hearing me talk about Smash or you have any other questions, I stream pretty much five to six times a week, like six to ten hours a day. And I love talking about Smash and I love talking about improving because a lot of times helping you guys helps me way more than you would probably guess. So yeah, man, if you did like this video, be sure to leave a like on it. Be sure to subscribe for more content coming in the future. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.